Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. And today we're going to have a look at this lens. This is the Zeiss Sonar 35mm f2.8 ZE with T-Star coatings. And this is a really nice lens that makes some fantastic images and I've got to say I think this is probably one of the nicest lenses I've ever shot. It's very small and light. It has a maximum aperture of f2.8 and it goes down I think to f22 and its minimum focus distance is 35 centimeters so it goes pretty close as well. So we're going to be reviewing this lens and putting it through its paces and seeing what it can do. But I'm also going to compare it to another 35mm lens, a vintage lens. It's the Carl Zeiss Jena Flectagon 35mm f2.4 and that's another of my favourite lenses. It's an outstanding vintage lens. It's a 35mm. It focuses down to 20 centimeters and probably a little closer. And its maximum aperture is f2.4, so it's a little bit faster. How well it can compare to a lens 50 years uh, on is really anybody's guess. So we're going to be looking at that shortly. But first, we're going to check out this modern Zeiss. So this little Zeiss is a very small and light lens. It seems to be made mostly of metal, at least the outer parts I think are metal. There may be some plastic somewhere in its construction, but from, from what I can tell the outside construction is metal. So a very small and light lens, it's not going to weigh you down. It's got autofocus, of course. Whoops, joggy ground. It's got autofocus, of course, being a modern lens, but it also has a manual focus function. That is a fly-by wire arrangement, which seems to work pretty well, actually. I had heard not so good things about fly-by wire focusing lenses, but this one seems to be pretty good in that respect. It's also got Zeiss T-Star coatings, and those are very famous coatings, and they're well known for being some of the nicest coatings around for keeping the flare down, uh, making sure the sun doesn't interfere too much with the shot, and generally protecting the shot from stray light. So we'll see how that works out. In fact, I don't think I've been disappointed once by this lens. It seems to consistently deliver really nice images. It's a very, very sharp lens indeed. And that sharpness seems to start from wide open, from f2.8. Perhaps that's not too surprising because f2.8 is a not a wide aperture, not a particularly wide aperture, but even so, I can't see any difference in the sharpness from this lens at f2.8, at f4, and at f8. It seems consistently sharp across the range, and as I say, it's one of the sharpest lenses I've ever shot. It has really strong contrast as well, and this may just be the contrastiest lens I've ever shot and the most consistently contrasty lens I've ever shot as well and that's really helped by those Zeiss T-Star coatings so they deserve their reputation they, they've earned that reputation and they really do work images are consistently contrasty light doesn't stray light that is doesn't really unsettle or upset this lens in fact i didn't manage once to um, make light upset it to get any unpleasant flares to make the contrast drop um, with stray light so those coatings really do 
an excellent job of keeping things in order and making sure you get the nicest image that's possible. And I think also that very strong contrast helps to give this lens its excellent colour performance and it really is excellent. It's a very high saturation lens. It seems to bump up saturation really fairly high and give images lots and lots of pop. Colours have loads of pop from this lens and again that's that's pretty much continuous in more or less any lighting conditions. It's not affected by stray light. Colours have that same characteristic strength and intensity and you can't really unsettle it time after time colours have loads of pop loads of depth and they're really nice as well i really like the color balance of this lens i really like the way that contrast uh, and colour work together to produce that very striking image that this lens can make. And that high contrast, that natural high contrast that it has, helps it to make really nice black and whites as well. I do like the black and whites from the Sony cameras and this lens seems to just work perfectly with them. They just work together, come together nicely to give very contrasty black and white images with lots of drama, lots of impact, very very nice images indeed in both colour and in black and white. This lens has dark corners if you shoot it wide open at f2.8 and I was quite surprised to see that. f2.8 is not a particularly wide aperture opening and this being a modern lens, I had expected it to do rather better than the vintage lenses, the many, many vintage lenses that I've shot in this focal length and many others. They all have dark corners and it seems to be just inherent with vintage lenses. And I was surprised to see them in this lens. And they really are very dark. Dark corners on this scale are worthy of a vintage lens and they don't disappear at f4. In fact, they're not completely gone until f8. Even at f4, they're still pretty dark. So if you don't like your corners dark, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It can add impact and drama to a shot. Personally, I don't mind it at all. But if you don't like your corners dark, then this lens does need to be stopped down to f8. Blur is very nice, it's very soft, very creamy, very dreamy and lovely. Can't really see any harsh spots, it does seem fairly smooth, in fact very smooth and very consistently smooth, really pretty much right across the range of subject to camera distances, camera to background distances. It may well have a harsh spot here and there, but I couldn't find it. So consistently smooth blur. The downside of that is that it doesn't have very much character. It's not particularly interesting blur in the way that blur from a vintage lens can be. So, I don't know. <laughs> Which of us actually checks the background blur for character? Who looks at a shot and says, gosh, I don't think that uh, background blur has very much character. However, it does add to the feel of an image. It's one of those kind of cues that we might not necessarily uh, notice particularly, but adds to the flavor and feel and character of an image. And really, this blur doesn't have too much character. Very nice, very consistently smooth, but a little bit bland. Autofocus is really quick. Even on the Sony a7R, which is said to be not the fastest autofocusing lens, I've had no problems with it. I can always find focus well, certainly in under half a second, probably a bit less than that. And, you know, that's entirely adequate for me. I don't need any faster focusing time than that. So excellent results with autofocus. No trouble hunting, no trouble gaining that critical focus when you need it. Pretty much spot on all the time I've found on both my Sony a7 
and A7R. The manual focus is a fly-by-wire, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, it, it does work well, and I didn't have any problems with it. I know uh, occasionally people haven't been too enamoured with it and hadn't, haven't liked it too much, but I found it fine. I, I didn't have any problems using it at all. The only uh, thing that I didn't like was that on the A7 and the A7R, as soon as you twist that focus ring in manual focus, it magnifies the image. That's really the camera's fault. It magnifies it a little bit too much. And I've found myself looking at a very highly zoomed in um, image with lots of jelly shutter going on. And that made it a little difficult to focus. I would have preferred the option not to have to automatically zoom in. But again, that's the camera's fault rather than the lenses. So altogether, the little Sonar 35 is certainly one of the nicest lenses I've shot. It delivers consistent results time after time. It's extremely sharp at whatever aperture you want to shoot at. It's got very strong contrast, colours have loads of pop and it makes very nice black and whites too. So a very very nice lens that I've really enjoyed shooting and making images with. But how will it compare to this lens which regular viewers to this channel will almost certainly have seen before. This is one of my favourite vintage lenses. It's an outstanding vintage lens. It's the Carl Zeiss Jena 35mm f 2.4 Flectigun. So let's see how it compares to a lens that is 50 or 60 years more modern. Well, in fact, the CZJ35 holds up pretty well against the newer competition. The first thing you'll notice is that if you look at the images, it's a less contrasty lens and that's very obvious. Images just have that little bit less punch. They're rather more delicate, rather more subdued and they don't quite have that pop of the later lens. They're a little bit flatter, don't seem to quite have the energy, quite have the pop and dynamism of the images from the later lens. Nevertheless, I think it compares pretty well. You'll notice also that the colours are rather more delicate, rather less saturated and vibrant, and it gives images a gentler, more delicate feel and character and it's quite surprising actually when you compare two lenses side by side you've nothing you know if you look at one lens on its own i've been using this flectagon for years and if you look just at one lens on its own without anything to compare it to it's very difficult to gauge um beyond uh, first impressions how well that lens is working and how well it's performing and it's been very interesting to compare these two. So, so far we can see that the images from the older lens are a little bit flatter, a little bit more delicate in their colours and their contrast. Also, the older lens, the Carl Zeiss Jena lens, is not quite as sharp as the more modern lens. Having said that, there isn't very much in it. There isn't a lot between these two, but you can see from these images that certainly shooting wide open, the newer lens is that bit sharper, but it is only a little bit sharper. It wouldn't take too much to mistake images from these two lenses if you didn't know them terribly well. Having said that, it's clear that the modern lens is that little bit sharper and it's consistently sharper as well. Um, pretty much shot for shot it beats the Zeiss Jena in sharpness but I think the Zeiss Jena does match it in a couple of shots strangely enough so it may be that you know I didn't quite focus it right because in a couple of these shots it does seem to be able to 
match the more modern lens for sharpness, although it's not consistent at doing that. Generally speaking, the modern lens is much more consistently sharp, and because it's autofocus, it's easier to get a, a perfectly focused sharp shot in the first place. Now, when it comes to background blur, actually, I found the blur to be really quite similar to that from the Sonar, and it does seem to behave in a similar way. Generally, blur has a similar feel, and in many of these shots, it would be difficult to really distinguish easily between the two lenses, and at first glance, you really wouldn't tell them apart. But I do think that the Zeiss Jena has more character in its background blur. You can see occasionally here and there there are double uh, images of um, uh, lights in the background and that's because of flaws. So you get these sort of repetitions in older lenses because of flaws and uh, largely because they were calculated, noisy aeroplane, largely because they were calculated by hand, or rather, not by computer, you know, by actual chaps in uh, uh, brown overalls with slide rules. And so those flaws lend character to a lens, and you can see that in the Flectagon. The blur is very similar, but it just gives a more characterful feel, and I think, to me, that's probably more of a pleasing feel and tends to make a rather more interesting shot. It's smooth but it does have more character, it's far less homogenous and I think ultimately uh, a little more interesting too. The Flectagon certainly flares more than the Sonar as well. Those 50 to 60 years have clearly made a big difference in terms of coatings, those T-star coatings on the Sonar clearly are doing their job very well and obviously they are excellent coatings and I think they are at least partly responsible for the overall character of the lens, for example in the colour and contrast department. Corners are dark on the Flectagon, probably to a similar degree as on the Sonar with the difference that in the Flectagon the corners are dark corners are decreased at f4 whereas in the Sonar, the more modern lens, they seem to stay pretty much the same until f8. Both lenses uh, have no dark corners, are rid of their dark corners by f8. So the Sonar is an outstanding lens, certainly one of the nicest lenses I've shot, but the Flectagon is not far behind. It has a wider aperture of f2.4, it has that wonderful 20 centimetre minimum focus distance, so it's not too far off a macro lens, and it's got rather more character in its background blur. The Flectagon is still an outstanding vintage lens, at least it is in my opinion. However, I do now have a quandary. I've now got two Zeiss 35mm lenses. One's a nice modern one with ultimately a slightly nicer image than the Flectagon. One is the one of the most successful and outstanding vintage lenses ever made. It's a legend. And I'm not sure which to keep. I love the Flectagon for its close focus abilities. I love it for the delicacy of its images and the sharpness of its images for a vintage lens. But the Sonar does make those fantastic images with loads of contrast and colours with loads of pop. So please help me out of my quandary. Let me know in the comments box below which one you think I should keep and which one I should sell on. Please let me know in the comments box below. I'd like to hear your opinion. As far as prices go, well, for a good Carl Zeiss Jena Flectagon, 
you'll pay somewhere in the region of 150 to 200 pounds at least in the UK that's what they go for and for a nice copy of the Sonar 35 you'll probably pay again in the UK around 300 maybe 350 pounds and both of these lenses are outstanding examples of the lens technology of their time. They both make really beautiful images. In the final analysis, it really depends what kind of image you want to make. Do you want a nice, homogenized, sharp, full of pop modern image? Or do you want a slightly more old school, slightly more delicate, uh, old school vintage type image with rather more character in the background blur. It's up to you, you decide. As for me, I still haven't decided which to keep. So do let me know in the comments box which you think I should keep and which you think I should sell on. So that's it from me for this week. Thanks to all the subscribers, people who've subscribed some time ago and have stayed with us, new subscribers who found their way to us. If you like the content on this channel, please like, subscribe and hit the bell button. It all helps to help the channel to grow and to help the channel develop. Speaking of which, I should also thank the patrons, the many patrons that we have now, patrons old, patrons new. It's thanks to support from patrons that this channel can continue to do what it does. So many, many thanks. And if you like the content on this channel and you'd like to help it grow and to develop and you'd like to help to support it, why not consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com forward slash xenography. So, until next time, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon for some more xenography.